Hello, my name is Luna and you're watching The Luna Show. Right now you're about to see a special presentation that I went to at the New Museum here in New York City. Um, the title of the conversation was How to Cut a Queen, a conversation with Jonathan Oppenheim, which was the, the, the editor of Paris is Burning. It was interesting to hear his point of view. We've heard Jenny Livingston talk about Paris is Burning a million times. But I never really heard Jonathan's version, so I hope you guys enjoy this. What do we expect films to do? Like, why do we always think they can represent us? And then what actually happens when representations of our communities go out into the world and then do affect us in different ways? So that's um, why I've asked Ivan and Jonathan to come and sit up here with me and try to talk about, talk through some of the different challenges of representation. Um, and storytelling um, in a bigger way. And I kind of see it as these two very different poles of like, what does it mean to be, in the case of Jonathan, really deep um, with the material of representation, like the actual footage and like the recordings and what uh, you have. Really, a documentary is a, is a, it's a moment in time. It, it's, a, it's a moment frozen in time. And, uh, and, and you, with your intention, you have an intention to make it, to make that uh, timeless, actually, um, um, so that so that it can have a sort of artistic, have a life as a piece of art, and um, so that's so that I have like a a bunch of clips from Paris, and and uh, maybe just you can watch them and. At what point you became involved with um, editing Paris is Burning? Um, yeah, well, Jenny had shot uh, a ball, uh, Paris's ball, and done some interviews. And um, uh, she wanted some. She wanted. Uh, she was looking for an editor, and she saw she saw this film Streetwise, which was a great documentary that I had worked on as a sort of an associate. But she came up to the director and she said, I, I want to work with the person who edited your film. And uh, he said, well, you, you couldn't afford uh, her, but I have somebody else you should talk about. <laughs> uh, so she called him and, uh, and she won the trailer, which was a you know, five and a half minute trailer, which took us four months <laughs> to edit, which you know, um, is pretty funny for people who know Funny that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long time for five months. <laughs> and she, but you know, when she spoke to me, I was completely, you know, we, we met at this free coffee shop, and she told me about it, and I was, I was completely like she, was, she, was, uh, she, she uh, lit a, a fuse. I was completely on, on fire with wanting to, to uh, work on it. And um, so, and, and uh, after three or four years, we finished. <laughs> so that's, that's basically the, the story. <laughs> so it was your first feature? It was a first feature. It was, yeah, yeah, it was the first, first. You have space to do all that you intend to. Now the categories are Butch Queen, one through 17, and for the girls 18 through 30, as far as all of y'all not walking, please realize that we all, at one time or another, have lusted to walk a ballroom floor. So give the patrons and the contestants, you know, a round of applause for nerves. Because with y'all vicious motherfuckers, it do take nerves. <laughs> Believe me, we're not going to be shady, just fierce. Jenny was very interested in what people had to, to say about the world and, and they, they were, you know, people really spoke uh, so brilliantly about it. And uh, it was just an incredible, you know, like it was, it was an incredible thing to, to work with the footage um, and, and to sort of absorb the way people were talking. And, and, and um, so what we did was we ended up having, you know, it was, it was kind of
cut out film, so we had rolls of film, and we had these, we had like maybe 25 theme rolls, you know, like we had themes like, uh, you know, gender, different um, realness, homophobia, you know, there were, it was a whole bunch of different themes, and we were just like, you know, building these themes, uh, you know, week after week, month after month, and, and I began to really freak out um, because I didn't really, I couldn't understand what the film was gonna be. Uh, it didn't really, I couldn't, uh, there was no plot. It was, you know, Jenny was not, was less interested in observational stuff um, and more interested in what, in, in, in what people felt. And that's how she, so really what we had was um, a lot of great ball footage and a lot of great interviews. And uh, there, was, there was not much in between. Uh, in it. So, uh, you know, the thing is that I, I had come to this, uh, um, to this whole world completely, I was completely, uh, I knew nothing about it. It was a complete shock to me that it existed. And I was completely, I was quite taken with it. I was really, you know, blown away by it. And I realized at some point, after really struggling with these theme rules and knowing that this was not gonna lead to a film, I, re I realized that, that most of the people who were gonna see this film were gonna be as blank a slate as I was. And that that uh, that people that, that the way that the way so I came to the structure, which was that the first half of the film was going to be um, a, a an exhaustive education, so that in in the, in the moral world, so that people could really have it in their bones that, that there would be nothing, there would be every, that it would it would cover so many aspects that they would actually uh, have, a, have a huge context uh, for the second half. And the second half, which was where the stories actually were filmed, and they were, they were it was really, the second half was really about people uh, from this world sort of taking it out into the, into the, into the larger world, the, uh, the world of everyday reality. And, so you had Willy Ninja and, you know, um, wanting to take Logan, making it, making it, you know, very large and having a, a, a real career as a, as a boger in, in a sort of mainstream, much more mainstream context. Um, where you have Octavia, you know, um, uh, applying for the supermodel of the year contest at Bloomingdale's. And where you have other other aspects of it, um, people who who have sex changes like Brooke, people who sort of who I think were sort of everybody was was in one way or another nurtured. I felt by the by the ball context and by that world, and I think that they were they. Um, you, but but if you just had the stories without the without that first half, you wouldn't really. You wouldn't have it. Wouldn't have that kind of impact. Wouldn't have the right impact. It would not. So I, I felt like it was. It's really like a totally bifurcated film. There's, the first half is completely uh, educational, and the second half is is an elaboration of people's lives out of that context. And that's. But it took. It was agony. So <laughs> <laughs> to, to get to that point, I gotta tell you, it was tough. Um, it seems like there aren't um, traditional characters so much in the first half as there are voices um, where certain people kind of poke out a little more than others. But was that an, an intentional, or was that? Well, there, there, there really the characters that exist, the Pepper, Dory, and you know Freddie. I mean, there was. There was no way to make them characters in the more. In the, there was no observational material, so they were characters. Um, they were. Can you explain?
explain observational Observational material. is observational is the, that you shoot uh, life and you, with a camera and you and you so people are eating dinner and you're shooting the dinner and uh, and that's it. That's what you're shooting and and you can get an enormous amount of, of emotional uh, all kinds of information from from working with that material. It's very very rich rewarding material. And there was, there was very, very little of it um, in this footage. So you could, you could follow a character th through their dinner, and then you could follow them to a ball, and you could then follow them out drinking afterwards, whatever. There wasn't, that didn't exist. So the characters were um, guides, and they, were, they, they existed as characters because you really feel Dorian, you really feel Pepper. You really feel um, Freddy, you know. You feel them, but they're not. Um, and Freddy, and and they had different roles. I mean, Freddy was somebody who couldn't was afraid to walk a ball, you know. And and he was Kim's protege. And he was he was a sort of fledgling ball person. And and Dorian was like a, you know, like a the grandmother of, of the world. And, yeah, people had different different roles, but they didn't exactly have traditional characters. They they played roles in the film. And the truth is that, that for me, they were they were like a, a family for me, uh, editing them. And and I felt like um, you know I felt like it, for me it was they were part of the house of Paris's brand. And, and I felt that in terms of the, of the editing, I was like the mother of the house of Paris. <laughs> and and, and that, I realized that that was my emotional connection to the, you know, when I was working with it. So. Um, do you feel, to what extent do you feel that those roles that you picked out for these different characters came from your own experience? Or like how, how I mean, do you, do you think of them as Universal, or I, I think that that the needs that are underlying the the, the whole c culture are universal. You know, so I think that I, therefore, you know, and I think that um, there's a, there are all kinds of marginalization that people experience emotionally. And I think that for me, working on it, I was working with my own sense of marginalization, uh, which exists in a completely different form of context. But nonetheless, I was able to transpose it in, or you know, move it into this arena because that's how I work. In general, that's how I work. So that was that was uh, you know, um, and I also think that. I, in a way, I think that you know, you know, people talk about documentary, and they talk about it in very strange ways. For me, from my point of view, they talk about objectivity, they talk about you know representation, and I think that really all you can do when you make a documentary is what you're really representing is your relationship with the subject, and and you're hoping that you're doing justice to them. Uh, as, you know, and, you, and, and that has to be your intention, which is also something I, I'm a, a big, huge believer in, the power and importance of the intention. And that the intention has to be, um, you have to aim high. Uh, and, and if you don't aim high, you're in big trouble. You know, because and, and you, if you, if you, if you intend to find something universal, you have a shot at finding it, and you know, a shot. You don't necessarily do it, but you have a shot. It's interesting what you were saying about um, that the first half of the film is about education, like immersive, um, yeah. and that there's almost this sense of. The, and that the second half is about the characters going out into the wider world. So in, right. in a sense, the first half is more about being inside. And right. I guess I'm just curious what you, how you think of 
because you were saying you were thinking of audience members as I, wa I, I wanted to bring them in, inside. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring them inside the way I had been brought inside, the way I understood that material. And I only understood the ball world from that material. And, um, you know, so it was, it was a limited understanding uh, in terms of, you know, reality, I think. That, but, but I wanted them to have my experience in as many ways as possible um, so that they could they could identify with the people on the other end. I was worried that they wouldn't be able to identify. And I think this is this is a question with documentary where you the question of how to bring um, how to bring audiences into the into the, under the skin of the subject is, is, is the primary struggle that, you, that you're dealing with. And it, 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 in every film it takes, it takes different, the problem presents itself differently. In this case, um, this was a world that was uh, unknown to me and unknown to most people. And, um, I think that that was that was the that was the presenting issue. It's like okay, this has to be known. This has to be. It, it, that's what had to be so immersive. It had to be. There couldn't you couldn't go off to in some somebody's story after ten minutes. That wouldn't have worked. That was my theory anyway. You want to somebody has sort of entrusted their life story to you or their their image to you, and and you you sort of. And as an editor, you have, you're in a very, a, you could actually, you can honor that trust. As a, as a director too, you, you can honor it, uh, or you can um, violate it. And I think that if you have the, the intention to honor it, uh, even though it's very subjective, and one person's honoring is another person's dishonoring. So, but, but you have to uh, be sort of straight with yourself. And, and I think that that's so. The fact that you're the fact that you're working with living, breathing individuals does cr it creates a strange zone, and and there's no way of navigating it except with your own. Um, so you have your own inner compass, and, and that's that's it. That's all you've got, you know. And uh, you you want to be. Um, uh, you want to be honorable to them and honorable to your own process. And, and, and that's, you're sort of navigating that the whole time. I feel like I want to, I just want to open it up because I'm sure other people have questions. Yeah. No, and now I'm the grandfather down to extravaganza. My question to you, have you been at a ball other than, you know, editing, yeah. editing, editing a ball? I, I have been, I have been at, at a ball. I have been at a ball. A? A single ball. Um, there was the only, there was nobody was in the footage was, was uh, sick. Nobody, nobody was, I mean, uh, Hector extravaganza was, was, Somebody who had, um, you know, like Venus talks about him uh, having, you know, died of AIDS, and that there was that was the only reference. Mm -hmm. There was it was. I mean, I was like, I, th I thought it was very interesting that 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 I thought it's, it doesn't seem to have hit this community, you know, you know. Then, you know, as the several years later, it was just completely, you know, different. But at that moment. It just wasn't there. People talked about it. There was a theme role for AIDS, <laughs> but but it was not something that anybody was, you know, in the footage mm -hmm. was uh, having an experience of. It. So I think that that's that's what I what I would say. The situation with AIDS and back in the days with Paris is Bernie. It was around. It was so stigmatized. Yeah.